Okay, so for these rings, there's two types of spanner wrenches. Uh, this type of a spanner wrench, my John Deere uses these and they have a notch or a groove on the outside and you'll put that in that notch or groove and you'll use that to turn it off. That is not how the Bobcat cylinder is. Uh, you can use a spanner wrench like this. Uh, this is one that I picked up and it works sometimes and the way that it works, it has two pin sizes one on each size, side, and you put those into little holes that are in this cylinder and then you can put like a, uh, a breaker bar or something in it and take that off. Sometimes that works. Uh, today I did not. I uh, actually put, a, put my cheater bar on it and everything and, and uh, just didn't want to come out. So there's the, the third option, which I don't love. I actually don't like it at all, uh, but the third option is a giant pipe wrench and a very large cheater bar. So um, you put the pipe wrench, be really careful about where you put it on the outside edge of this uh, and, and get it on there as tight as you can get it and then put your bar on it and you can usually get it to, to crack loose. I usually only use that to start it. Once you get that first turn, you can come back and use one of the other spanner wrenches to get it off. But that's, that's it for taking these out. You can see uh, this part really just keeps the fluid from coming out of the cylinder. Uh, so it just has a, an O-ring and like a, uh, you'll have an O-ring, a round O-ring, and then a washer behind that. And then it has another O-ring out here at the face that comes into a groove here by the threads. Uh, it'll also have a on the back side of this, it's going to have a wiper, and the wiper's job is to keep the dirt from going backwards in. That's the part that I think actually partially failed, um, that, that the wiper kind of tore off eventually. So, uh, But we're going to rebuild, we're going to replace all the stuff, clean it up really good, and then get it all put back. I usually do this uh, and get this at least loose uh, and off before I do anything else because it, the machine does a great job of holding this in place, and I don't have to use a bench for that. Uh, but now it's time for us to, to take our pin out. Uh, the pin has to come out so that the rod can come out. And then the rod will have a nut on the end of that and it's going to have also some, some O-rings and some packings. Uh, so next we need to get this out. So I'll try to clean a little bit of this grease off. Uh, I've got a, a bolt to take off on the back side over here. And then I think I can take this pin out and that pin will let me take this rod out. So while you have these pins out, uh, look for the little holes. The zerk fitting, the grease fitting will allow the grease to come in and come out through these holes. Uh, just make sure that the grease isn't hardened and packed in there. Uh, a big reason why I grease so frequently is to avoid that, is to avoid the grease getting dry and hardening up. I also tend to now, I've learned this I think the hard way, I try to buy better grade grease, th grease that I don't think is going to harden up as easily or dry out. I try to make sure that you know it's a, a type of a grease that hopefully will stay you know, soft and, and liquid uh, so that these don't get packed up and it will always kind of flow out. So something to check while you're doing this, just check these little holes in your pins. Also check your pin for how much wear is on it, see if it needs to be replaced. Uh, also look for any cracks in the in the pin. Uh, you'll see any kind of stress 
uh, cracks or fractures or anything like that sometimes in the in the pins and what I, where I've seen it is actually technically happens where these holes are drilled in the pin uh, but but just kind of look at it clean it off pretty good uh, get it nice and clean we're going to use this here in a minute uh, so keep it handy Well, that didn't work out like I had hoped, uh, but it's out of there. Uh, so this is the this is the rod. There will always almost always be uh, this kind of piston part of this, a nut on it that will get locked tight. The nut goes on the rod, and then this is one packing, and then this is the other part of that. Uh, so everything has O-rings and seals to rebuild. This has some on the inside to go along with these ones on the outside uh, and then this one has a uh, kind of a plastic gland on it as well so now that we've gotten this out uh, I hoped not to make that big of a mess but it turns out uh, <laughs> didn't work the way I hoped it would uh, but we'll get this uh, nut taken off now and I'll show you kind of how I do that So that came off way too easy. I've never had one come off that easy. My guess is this nut was actually loose. Uh, I could tell there was some movement on the on the piston part before I removed that, but it didn't hardly have to take anything to take this this nut off. And so my guess is that that nut actually worked itself loose, uh, or that who knows way back somebody didn't even assemble it back right. Uh, but that's probably a big reason why this failed. I've already taken it all apart. I've got the kit. Uh, it, it doesn't make any sense not to go ahead and put it in. So, so this is what you've got. Uh, you've got this part, which is the, the piston part of it. You've got this part, which is the rod part of it. And then you've got this. And then it's got a packing inside of there, inside basically the, the ring and the nut. It'll have a packing inside of there. And then it has this wiper seal. Uh, so you can see this, this wiper is totally shot there isn't much left of that. Uh, you don't really want to use it if that wiper is bad uh, because it lets sand come through that rod and can potentially start to work its way into this uh, into the packing here. So we're gonna go ahead and take uh, this stuff out and replace it with our new stuff. Hopefully you can see that right there. That's where our failure took place. Uh, that's why it started to push fluid out. It finally broke this, it broke that uh, part of the packing out. I don't know the technical term for it, but it broke that out. And you can see the spring behind that. So it deformed this and pushed it out. Uh, and that's likely where, where I started to get all the fluid draining out. So uh, we'll get a new one of these put back in there. So this is really important for the Loctite to work. Uh, this has to be clean can't have all the hydraulic fluid and everything on it so this nut and the nut that we got in our kit needs to get cleaned off so we're gonna go ahead and clean that so it took a couple of trips back and forth <laughs> to the crock pot but I have the, the seal in uh, the cylinder head part and the wiper in. Uh, seals always have a direction to them so always pay attention to that. Every seal has a purpose and does something. This seal uh, keeps dirt out and so it's gonna uh, the lip of this seal needs to be faced this direction so it's not letting it in. Uh, the seal that's inside here is keeping the fluid from blowing out that seal and so the lip of it needs to be aimed back up the cylinder. Uh, so just make sure you keep your, your seals oriented the right way uh, when you're putting it all back together. Okay, after it softened up a bit, after a lot of failed attempts, I got the, the piston ring on it. it. Needs to actually be the other sideways, so I'm going to have to work it. There we go. 
should be should go this way. Now I almost always they they inevitably stretch out, but it will shrink back. Uh, it has to to get this diameter is a lot fatter than than down in the groove, so it has to get bigger in order to fit around that, and then it'll shrink its way back in. So don't worry too much about that. Once you get it in there, it'll as it as it cools even it'll start to shrink back. But that's how you get the piston ring on. So put a little bit of hydraulic oil on these and it'll help them slide on. Also, make sure that you orient everything the correct direction. So remember, this end is going to go up into that cylinder. So this uh, cylinder head should be facing this way. So this extends out, dirt gets on here, wiper sheds it off. Uh, pressure of hydraulics going that way. There's almost always a taper on the end of the rod, so you just have to work it around that. There we go. Alright, so next is our, uh, the actual piston part of it. Slide that on. I dot a thread locker. All right, it'll start to go on, and then it'll usually catch. There we go. There. So there's mostly just air in there, and the air will sneak by the things, but uh, fluid wouldn't. So you can kind of work it in a little bit. If you can get these fully extended like this, it makes it a whole lot easier, because you don't have to push the, the rod and everything in as far. So that's going to do it for our tilt bucket cylinder rebuild. So I tested it first before I greased up this pin. So I'm going to grease that up real quick. Then I'm going to go field test it, see if we can dig some dirt with it and uh, make sure everything's good. So uh, this part of it, the cylinder, the head part of the cylinder, uh, just get it about as close, as tight as you can get it. Uh, it's got an O-ring, but it doesn't really, you know, no pressure or nothing like that. It's nothing's gonna try to work it loose. So just get it pretty close, uh, get it tight, uh, put as much as you can put on it safely without smashing your fists into something. So let's get this pin greased up and uh, we'll go test it out. So I don't know if you guys have one of these, but it uh, clamps onto the grease fitting. Game changer. You can learn how to use it. Uh, then you just pump it full of grease. So just uh, grease it till it comes out of the around that pin, and uh, that's gonna do it for this one. I uh, hope that was helpful for anybody that's trying to rebuild their tilt bucket cylinder on a 753 Bobcat. It's about a 1995, I believe, and uh, hope that helps. All right, so let's go play around with it, make sure everything works out, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.
One thing about building a house, there's no shortage of sawdust.